Hi everyone, my name is Christy Jux and I am an Emerald Ambassador with Plexus and I'm excited to share with you today um, just some ideas for how to mentally wrap your head around the work that we do in Plexus, um, how to work smarter, how to create um, a plan, a schedule where you feel like every day you are focused, you know what you're doing for your work and you can be intentional because what I'm passionate about is I am passionate about making sure that we can be present and in the moment. I am passionate about my family, about my husband, my children. I want to have quality time with my children every day. I want to show up for them. I don't want to be constantly on my phone, constantly answering messages, um, kind of like a chicken with my head cut off, with no intention and no structure and no boundaries. That is not exciting to me. That is not a good way to work. It's not an effective way to work. What I do want to create when I'm working is intentional laser focus on what's most important, on what works, um, cut things down so that it's really everything that we're doing is effective and um, planned ahead and intentional and simple. So that's what I want to talk to you about today. I really hope that you will get something out of this. I hope you'll take some notes because this video is raw. This is not um, a finished product. I don't have any fancy slides. I don't have um, anything really presentable for you. I just want to kind of share my heart with you about this. Um, and hopefully you can take some notes and get something out of this that will help your workflow go a little bit better. So first of all, um, I want to talk about Keeping it simple. So I know that you can you can find um, maybe like a daily action stack. You can see those worksheets, or maybe like um, you know the the IPA journals where you write every day who you're reaching out to, who you're following up with, who you're educating, who you're training, and all of those things. And those are awesome. That's really essentially what we do is we do those things every day, and we're consistent with those things. We're posting on Facebook, posting on social media, on Instagram, um, personally about our family so that we can really create good content and so we can really connect with our audience and also about Plexus. We're going to be posting about Plexus. We're going to post about the business, um, about the products. And so those are kind of like our daily method of operation. Those are the grind. Those are the things that we do every day that don't change. So what I'm going to say isn't going to take away from that. Those are kind of just like a revolving that's the work that we do. We get paid really well to do that. We get paid really well to um, have our daily method of operation and to be consistent and to be passionate in those activities. But I kind of want to break it down so that when you sit down to do your Plexus business, you don't look at that and go, I don't even know where to start. I don't even know what to do. This is so much. There's so much I could do that I don't even know where to start and know what to do. So I want to just break it down a little bit so you can kind of have um, a structure and maybe um, an order of, of which things are most important to spend your time on and which things can maybe be pushed to the end of the list. So number one, personally sponsoring three new ambassadors every month is crucial. You want to have new growth every month. You want to make sure that you're adding fresh new people to your team, that you're staying excited about the products, that you are... Um, growing your team personally, level one, three, at least every month. Um, it doesn't need to be a ton more than that, but for sure three is going to help your team to have fresh new people, fresh new blood. So that's important. So your activities for that number one, write it down if you're taking notes, personally sponsoring three. So your activity needs to be around that. If you haven't done that yet, if you're not yet silver, you don't need to do any trainings. You don't need to do any IPA challenges. You need to do nothing more, if you're not silver yet, than to get yourself silver. So you're going to want to find three people that you can talk to about Plexus that want to get started with you, that want to take the products. So that's keeping it simple. If you're not there yet, don't think about anything else until you're there. Three new ambassadors. If it's you going silver, great. If that means every month, you haven't had three yet, your activity needs to be focused on those three things first. So that can be your posts. Your Facebook posts are going to generate interest, and that's going to turn into people enrolling. So Facebook posting about yourself and your Plexus posts are going to be crucial and going to play into that personally enrolling three every month. Um, your follow-ups. So going through 
your messages, going through your list of who you've talked to and following up. That can look different, you guys. That is not just a copy and paste message that you send to all these people. You've got to kind of make it tailored to what that person needs. So go into that message, look through, see what they've said in the past. Look through and see, you know, maybe it would serve if I put a, an article in this um, thread that I think will really pertain to them. Maybe it would help if I um, invited them to an event that's happening where they're going to learn about the products. Maybe it would help if I let them know about an incentive that's happening. Maybe it would help if I just say, hey, Joe, how are you doing? Maybe it doesn't even have to be about Plexus. Find a way to wake up those messages and just keep people talking to you. Keep that conversation going. A lot of times, I'll look back through, and those people that end up enrolling, it might have taken a year of just staying in contact. Sometimes we're not even talking about Plexus, but we're just keeping the conversation going, keeping them talking to me, letting them know I care about them, because truly I do care about people, and I care about them and their health and their lives. So whatever you can do to keep that conversation going, keep them engaged, that is follow-up. So that's a crucial part of getting those three personally sponsored ambassadors every month, spending some time intentionally following up with people and keeping people talking to you. Um, you know, cold messaging can play into this as well. Some people like to do a few a day. Personally, I like to do a whole bunch all at once. Like I'll sit down once a week and do a whole bunch. Sometimes once every two weeks, I'll sit down and do a whole bunch because once I get going, it's easy. So for me, that works really well just to get my huge ranks list. I have a Google sheet that has like 600 names on it because I went through my Facebook friends one day and I wrote down every single, I typed in every single name of anyone that I wanted to at some point talk to about Plexus. So I've got this huge master Google sheet that is like my pool that I draw from when I do cold messaging, um, just to get some new things going, get some thoughts going when I feel like I need more uh, people to be talking to. So cold messaging plays into that as well. So just picture this, that number one is personally sponsoring three, and the activities that go along with that are priority. Those come first. You've got to do those things to be generating those new ambassadors every month first, before you're training your team, before you're answering questions, before you're doing anything like that, you've got to do those act, those activities first because those um, keeping new people coming into your team is crucial and probably the most important thing that you can do to keep your business healthy and growing and strong. Okay, so number two, I would say in importance. And again, this is not perfect. I've not spent hours thinking about this. This is something I get a lot of questions about is how you do your daily grind. What do you do? I want to come sit and work with you so I can see what you do. Guys, I don't do it perfect. I am not like a shining example of a perfect um, Plexus workday. But these things are the pillars in what I do. And I feel like I try to prioritize and do these most important activities first so that my business can continue to grow. So this would be number two, helping your team grow. And what I mean by this is helping individuals on your team grow. So what, knowing what your people's goals are, what are your, and I'm talking about level ones here. Your job is to help those level ones and to support them. So go through, look at your level ones who are working, who want to improve, and make sure you know what their goals are. I like to find out at the first of the month what everybody's goals are for the month, and maybe long term what they're wanting to hit, what rank they're wanting to hit by three months or six months. You want to know what their goals are so that you can help coach them on how to grow their business. So um, also, I've noticed sometimes I can see people's potential and I can see, you know, I think that this person could add 10 people to their team this month. And maybe they were only thinking of adding four or five. So really assessing and thinking, okay, I think this person is capable of this. And then going to them and saying, okay, here's what I think. You added this money last month. You have this on your side. This is what I see you accomplishing this month. Are you ready to go for it? Do you want to do this? Is a really good way um, to get that personal conversation going. You want to make sure that you're in touch with your level ones and that you're teaching and talking and training them and knowing where they are and where they want to go. So that would be your next important um, action steps is Look at where your people are and where they want to go and help them reach their goals. Help them take that goal and break it down into, okay, if you want to add um, 
16 people in a month. That means you need to add four people a week. That means this kind of action needs to be happening every day. You need to be sending this many cold messages a week. You want to be making sure you're um, asking your people on your team to share so that you can start to promote them. So you want to get their goal, break it down so that you can help them um, work it into a daily grind of activity that they'll be able to get the results that they want. That's going to help you grow your team. By helping your people hit their goals, your level ones, you're going to notice that you start to get more production. But you've got to be personally invested with those people. It can't just be, well, they know what they're, they're supposed to do. You've got to talk to them at least, you know, every couple days, um, maybe once a week if that's your style. And again, this is my style. This is what works for me. You might be different. This might freak you out. And that's okay. We all kind of work differently. But as for me, I'm a list maker. I like to kind of see what I'm supposed to do so that I can live in compartments in my life and be 100% present. And this is what really works for me. So another question to ask around that number two, helping individuals on your team grow, would be who's new? Who did you just enroll that hasn't posted yet? Who's new that doesn't have an accountability partner yet? Who's new that needs to go silver? Who's new that is untapped that you can go talk to and you can encourage them to maybe do a post on Facebook and get a couple of accountability partners? Um, who have I not invited to post yet? You guys, there's some really awesome verbiage that you can use to help your people post. Um, the attitude that I like to take when it comes to this is I want to encourage you to do a post. And here's why. I know you don't want to start a business. Neither did I. And that's not really what I'm talking about here. I want to encourage you to post because there are so many people that are silently suffering that we have no idea are suffering. I know I was suffering. And I know so many people don't know about Plexus. So by you putting up a simple two-liner post, you're going to give your friends and family the opportunity to learn about Plexus, the opportunity to know about Plexus, know that it's an option. So that's the kind of verbiage I like to use. But again, everybody's a little different. You want to kind of be aware of your people and where they are, meet them where they are. But you want to lead with your heart, you guys, because truly, for me, Plexus is not a way to make money. It is so much bigger. I truly care about helping people feel better. I truly care about spreading the word to a lot of people, thousands and thousands and thousands of people, about living life to the fullest. And if that's your intention, if that's your heart, you cannot be shy about having people share. I was so scared to do this in the beginning because I was like, I don't want to be pushy. I don't want to be that person. But if your vision is that you want to help people, is that you want to get this word out to thousands of people. You cannot be shy about it because it comes from your heart. You truly do want people to know about Plexus, and you want people to be successful. And not only that, you want your people to have success on the products. And it is statistically proven that if they have an accountability partner or two or three, they will do better on the products. So don't be shy about asking people to post. Don't be shy about asking people, let's get you an accountability partner or two so that you can have more success on the products. Because that's exactly true. That's exactly what it is. Okay, so that activity number two, or the pillar number two, I would say to your activities, is helping your individuals on your team grow. Um, you can also ask yourself, who loves their products that hasn't shared yet? And you can approach them and talk to them where they are and encourage them to do a post for the same reasons. You can drum shiz up, is what I like to say. You gotta drum shiz up. You've gotta have work to do. So, the first pillar, personally sponsoring three people. There's activities that go along with that. Second pillar, helping individuals on your team grow. You've gotta dig around, you've gotta create avenues that you can work. You've gotta create um, some momentum this way, somehow. If you have two people on your team, great. Keep working it out. If you have 500 people on your team, great. Keep doing the same thing. Look for people that are new, haven't posted. Look for people who have loved their products and haven't posted. Help people go silver that are new. Things like that. You get the idea. So pillar number three, I would say in your activities and what you should base your activities around, um, support your current ambassadors and customers. I like to um, check in with my people at least once a month. Even if they've been on the products for a year, I still like to check in once a month and just say, how are you feeling? How are your products working for you? Is there anything that I can do um, to help you tweak things and get you feeling awesome? Because my job is to help you tweak things until you feel incredible. We will not stop until you feel the best you've ever felt. 
So even if someone's been on the products for six months, um, there probably is still room for improvement. So I like to make sure I'm in touch with my people at least once a month. And I'm going to show you at the very end, um, logistically, some of the, the spreadsheets that I do and the lists that I make to just keep it simple so I can really see who I need to follow up with. And um, I'm just visual. I have to see things. So I'll show you that at the very end. Um, and then with your new people, it is so crucial that you are checking up with your new people four times in a month. You need to be asking how they're doing, um, making sure you're sending them directions, um, checking on them how they're doing with their die-off. You've got to be touching those new people four times a month. For me personally, I have to write things down because I want to be able to check off with my brain, check out, and still have things in place so that when I go to pick up my work, it's all clear. I know exactly what to do. So for me, I like to set an alarm in my phone that's, you know, at three days after they've you know, when they get their products, they get directions from me for sure. Three days out, I check with them. Seven days out, 14 days out, 21 days out. And I'll just go into my calendar and write their name. Check up with Ashley um, on that day so that I can just turn off. I just have to have a brain list because I can't remember all this stuff. It stresses me out. So it brings me more peace to just take care of things that way so that I can relax and know that it's in my phone, it's in my calendar, and I can just open up that day. And then when it's time to work, I know I need to check in with those certain people. So you want to make sure that you're supporting your current ambassadors and customers um, with that. So um, pillar number four, I wrote this wrong, um, is to create a track for your people to run on. Okay, some people don't do this, and that's great. Some people don't believe in doing this. They call it hand-holding or whatever. I truly feel, and it's just my leadership style or whatever, that I want to take the experience that I have and I want to boil it all the way down and help my people have an easy time working the business. Because I know in the beginning, I so appreciated my mentors giving me verbiage. Because for me to sit there and rack my brain on, oh my gosh, what should I say? How should I say it? I don't want to come off this way or that way. That was the draining part. So for me, I like to say, Hey guys, those laser focused um, bursts of action posts that I've been doing, that's what this is. I want to give my team a track to run on. So basically that could be letting them know what's coming up for the week and saying, okay, we've got this Socketing Plexus health event on, on Thursday. I'm going to give you verbiage that you can send to your people for the next three days so that you can have a harvest, so that you have people at that event versus the day before saying, oh my gosh, there's a Socrates Plexus Health event tomorrow. I mean, that doesn't give people a track. So again, this is my leadership style. Not everybody's like this, and that is great. Whatever works for you is great. But I'm just sharing what's worked for me is to, to truly invest some time into giving my people a track to run on. Do I do this first? No, and that's important. Pillar number one is personally enrolling three people every month. So you need to understand, creating a track for your team to run on is not your first priority. It is number four, okay? And I'm, again, this is not totally well thought out. It's just kind of what was off the top of my head and just kind of how I do things. But I could probably redo this again and make it perfect, but this is just um, a little cross-section of my heart and my head on this subject. So the way that looks is creating a track for your team to run on. Maybe you just have a builder's thread that has all your builders in a thread on Facebook, which I would recommend. I wouldn't really rec recommend doing a team page right now because our team has a rockin' team page and we've got Sockety Plexus Health. Um, if you wanna do that, that's fine, but I would save all the energy um, and time that you're putting into your business to do the first three pillars. Because can you see how if you start to get into this and start to get into management mode where all you're doing is pillar number four, and creating a track for your people to run on, that's not the right way to build your business. This has to be fourth because you've got to do those first three things the most. So I would say create a thread on Facebook that has all your builders in it, and then that way you can check in and say, hey, you guys, I just wanted to let you know, Thursday's our Sockety Plexus Health event, today's Monday. Here's some verbiage that you can send for the next couple of days so that you can have some people join you in that event on Thursday. Also, we have our business event that's going to be Thursday. Here's some verbiage to send for that. Make sure you're inviting anybody that you know has ever shown interest, anyone that you want to 
do the business with, kind of that verbiage where you're you're creating it a situation where your people can spend 15 minutes and they know exactly what to do, they know exactly what to say, it makes it easy for them. The duplication really explodes when you do this because you take the brain work out of it for your people. They're new, they don't know what to say, and sometimes if people are confused, they do nothing. So we don't want our people to be confused and do nothing. We want our new people to say, I have the tools, I know exactly what to say, I'm gonna copy paste and personalize this, and I'm gonna send it to my friends, and guess what, we create success for them. So that's what I like to do when creating a track for people to run on. I want people to feel success quick. I want them to feel empowered so they know exactly what to do, and so they can start going and have some success. So they don't kick themselves out of the business before they even start because they get in their head, they get confused, and they don't do anything. So creating a track for people to want to run on. This can be a contest. Maybe you want to do a contest for the last week of the month and you want to offer your people an incentive for enrolling a new ambassador. You can be creative. You can do whatever you want, but you've got to put some thought into creating a track for your team to run on. Give them something to work for. Give them the verbiage. Make it easy for people to plug in and get success with their business. Um, pillar number five, personal growth. And I wouldn't say this is last priority. It's just something that's a pillar in your daily activity. Whether that's listening to an uplifting video while you get ready, or listening to an audible book, book or spending a minute reading, whatever that looks like. Making sure that you're growing personally and that you're always filling your head and your heart with good thoughts. Because that's what we need in this business is a flood of good thoughts, a flood of information that's going to support our goals and our visions and our affirmations. And of course, this is after you've done your prayer, after you've done affirmations. These are basically the nitty gritty five pillars of activity um, and kind of just in order so you can see where to spend your time first. Um, okay, I'm going to go through a few things that are gonna explain some ways to work smart instead of hard, because we're all about smart up in here, am I right? I don't wanna spin my wheels doing all sorts of busy work. I want to do, th do things once and not have to do it again if possible. So I'm gonna share with you um, some of the things I do to make things a little bit smarter. So, first of all, um, when I work, I have a few different tabs up on my computer, so I can easily uh, touch each of the tabs. I can open my Plexus Worldwide and see where my points are. I can see our new people. I can open up Google Keep and take notes. Um, I can open up my, my spreadsheet and see who I need to send messages to. I can open up my messenger. So I prefer working when I really dig in. I prefer to work on my computer because I like to have everything at my fingertips so I can be quick, so I can type. I'm not using my thumbs. Of course, our, our phones are really convenient, but I would highly recommend you do your power hour on a computer if possible so that you can be smart and really see um, what it is that you need to do. Okay, so what I'm showing you here is this, let me move this so I can see what I'm doing. So this is my back office. This is under, under detailed. If you go over here to reports, detailed genealogy, this is what I've pulled up. And they're going to change the back office soon, so I'm not even going to train you on this at all because it's all going to be different soon, like a few days, which is exciting. But if you want to know how to see your new people, this is where I would say, of course, you need to see where your points are, but you want to see how much growth is going on on your team. If you click filters, and then you go over here, show only new members, click yes, and then go over here, update report. This is gonna pull up just your brand new people that have enrolled for the month. So let me show you. So here's where our team is, pretty awesome. But this will show you all the new people that have joined your whole organization that month. And I wanna show you, you can sort this by level. You click level, it's gonna sort at level one, through seven. How awesome is that? You can sort this by enrollment date if you click that. How awesome is that for you to be able to see exactly when people enrolled? You can sort this, so maybe toward the end of the month when you're point stocking, you can sort this by next convenience order date so that you can see who's left to process for the month. Um, 
you get the idea. You can just sort this by any of those these um, columns. You can sort it by. Okay. So I always have that tab open so I can easily go back and forth and see what I'm doing, see what the growth is, see what's going on, see who's new that needs to go silver. Okay, then if you go up here, I want to show you I have um, I have what I call the work in it list, my hot prospects. So this is anyone who has responded to a message or who's reached out to me or who I want to reach out to or who has um, asked for a sample or who has commented on a post. I put them on this work in it hot list because they're recent hot contacts. Okay, and then I color code. Again, this is what works for me. Do not feel like you have to do this um, if it's not your personality. For me, I like to look at that and say, these are hot leads that I'm working with. These are people that have said they want to order. These are people that I need to message still. These are people that um, are hot, that are fresh, that are looking for information now. Um, this works for me. Obviously, you can do what works for you. These are people that say they're not interested, that said they wanted a sample and then didn't. Huh, whatever, it's all good. So anyway, this is my work in it hot list. And I would suggest that all of you do that. Um, create one of these so that you can know it's just a really great place to draw from. When I sit down to work, I don't have to sit and go, where's that list I made? Or, oh, remember that person messaged me? I can just get in here, update it maybe every couple days. Um, but I can just start sending messages right away. Another one that I have is my current level ones spreadsheet. This is all in Google Sheets. You can download the free app and you can just um, create these. I'm not proficient with them. I know how to change the column color. I know how to add the columns. But these are all of my level ones who are current. So whether they're currently, like not people that don't order anymore and haven't ordered, but these are all my level ones that are either still ordering or still talking to me or whatever. And again, I color code them if they need action um, or if they are ordering consistently. Or, you know, if maybe they'll just want to share. Um, so, again, I don't up this every day. I don't update it every day. But probably every few days I'll go in and update this. Or maybe once a week. Maybe once two, every two weeks. Whatever. It's so much easier for me to go in here when it's my, my time to do my, my monthly follow-ups and look through and say, oh, my gosh, I need to talk to all these people today. You know how much faster it is to do this and just reach out every single person? It takes me 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. Because I can see it. So this makes it really easy for me to do my monthly follow-ups. Um, another, I'm going to show you another spreadsheet that I have. Um, that is my huge, massive, interested peeps. See my, my positive affirmations? This is really my Frank's list. But I'm trying to create the seed of these people are interested. Okay, so this is my massive list. I went through my Facebook friends one day. And I wrote down um, every single person that I wanted to talk to about Plexus. There are 700 something names in here, guys. Have I talked to all of them yet? Absolutely not. Okay, look at this. But this is my pool. When I feel like my, my pool is dried up, I go here and I, I find some new people to message. This is not my working at hot list. My working at hot list is way more current. It's way more active. These are people I'm working with right now. Um, but this does help me to know that I have tons of prospects to work with. I used to do this where I'd do A, B, 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 so my hot people were at the top. But I kind of started to realize I just needed to make a separate working at hot list so I can see exactly who I'm working with right now. So that works well for me. Um, another thing I do is I do Google Keep. And I'm a fan of Google Apps because they are synced across Google. So if you're at the library and you need to work with your whatever, I mean, I'm just saying, you can go log on to your Google app, your Google Keep, and you can work there from any place where you have the internet. So, and they sync from your phone to your computer. So that way you're not having to go back and forth. You can finish a note on your computer, and then go hold your thumb down on it, select it all and copy and paste it into a post, like instantly. I like Google Apps because I like things to be synced and easy to get to. So here's what I do. I want you to see, I have a ton of notes. I am constantly copying, pasting things into my notes 
if I hear some good instructions for different types of people, copy and paste it into my notes. Um, when people, I'm showing you this one because when people enroll, I want to send them something that gives them some um, instructions for right after they enroll. So every time I do, I'll click in the search bar up here. So these are, I'm going to go back here. So this is my notes. These are all my notes. I have hundreds of notes, you guys. I keep everything in here. Okay. But the thing that's cool is I can search up here. If I just enrolled someone, I go, okay, they're all enrolled. So I click right here. I copy and paste it. I put their username, their password right here, right in there, copy and paste it into an order or into a message and send it to them. And this one's specific to Ali, so I don't, I take some of that out, but it talks about being consistent. It talks about 90 days. It talks about their convenience order and says, I set that up for you because I want to make sure you're consistent. It talks about staying in touch with me, blah, blah, blah. Guys, then I'm done. Okay. Google Keep saves my life. So this is another thing that I would say is a hack um, to doing your business in an efficient and smart way, okay? An invite for Socket Plexus help, okay? So if I talk to someone who's like, I would love to learn about it, I go type in the search, invite for Socket Plexus help. And then I go here and say, hey, hope you're doing well. I wanted to let you know I have this group, blah, 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 blah. Guys, do you know how much easier working is when it's all copied and pasted here? Let's just see here. How about directions? Um, how about thyroid directions? Okay. Um, you go here. There's new thyroid directions. Copy, paste, send it to people um, that have their thyroid issues. Let's see. What else? How about seven-day challenge? Okay. Invite for seven-day challenge. Boom. Copy, paste. Done. Okay. Everything that you hear. Everything you hear from an amazing mentor, you need to be putting into your notes here so you can draw from it, okay? Um, let's see what else. That's probably all for now. But I want you to know, when I'm working, I have all these pages up. I am flipping back and forth. I am looking at who I can help go silver. I am looking at who loves their products. I'm looking at my notes. Um, this is how I work because I have to see things. I'm very visual. And so this is what I do. This is what works for me. And I think that it will work for you too if you um, get a little bit more organized so you can see what you need to do, okay? So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Okay, so those are just some ways to work smart. And there's obviously a lot more I could say, but I'm gonna stop with that because this is getting kind of long. Okay, another, the last thing I wanna share with you is there is a flow to the month. I don't know if you've noticed, but every single month, at the very beginning of the month, we put out a calendar. And there are events that are strategically placed throughout the month so that you can see what's coming up so you can work on it and prepare for it. So what I like to say the beginning of the month is when we are getting our goals set. We're getting our vision for the month. We're looking at where do I want to be next month? So how many people do I need to add this month? And then I break it down and say, okay, well, how many people do I need to help hit their goals in order for me to hit my goal? We're setting goals with our people. We're doing coaching calls with our level ones. Um, all those kinds of things. We're preparing for the month and being intentional so that we can execute and have an awesome month. We're also doing some recognition for the previous month. We're saying, yay, this person added this many people. Yay, you added one person. Yay. Um, and I'm not going to get too detailed details because I don't want to overwhelm you. But the middle of the month, we're executing. We're doing our training groups. We're doing our dabs challenge. We're doing our seven-day challenge. We have our events we're doing. We're doing all of that. We're planting the seeds and we're nourishing the seeds, okay? And then the end of the month, we're harvesting. That's when we're following up like crazy. You can do, we're following up all throughout the month. But if you want to kind of think of each part of the month has kind of a different focus, it'll help you with your efforts daily to be like, okay, where are we in the month? Where should my focus be? Um, we're maybe talking about incentives at the end of the month. We're hustling, we're point stocking, we're doing all that kind of stuff. Um, and if you really, really notice everything that we do, all of our calendars, all of our events are strategic so that you can prepare and kill it. So at the beginning of the week, um, what I like to do is Sunday nights. I like to sit down and say, okay, what does my week look like? Which events do I have coming up? Okay, Thursday I've got the Sockety Plexus Health event. So I'll write Monday and Tuesday. I need to work on inviting for that. I want to start setting up some invitations. I want to look through my messenger and see 
who's asked me about Plexus that I can invite to this. And then there's the business event. Okay, well then a couple days before that, I want to start inviting for that. Obviously, we're trying to help you do that. But if you do that, if you take some time to really plan at the beginning of the month, at the beginning of the week, and then be intentional with your time and just say, these are my hours I'm working, period. And then when you're not working, you're not working. You are playing with your kids. You're having family dinner. You're having family home evening. You're out with your husband. You're not looking at your phone all the time. You're being intentional and you're so much more effective. So that's what I would say, you guys. Um, of course, there's more I could say, but I hope this helps you know what to do when you go to sit down to work because the key is being consistent. It's not perfect. This looks perfect. It's not, you guys. Every day, I don't pull out my spreadsheets. Some days I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot. But every couple days I sit down and I get consistent and I make sure I update my list and I do my action every single day so that I can get these results. So anyway, I hope that helps. I love all of you. Create a beautiful day. And just remember, you can do this. I know you can do it. Keep being consistent. Don't you ever give up on yourself because we can do this together. And I love all of you. Mwah.